with It's Pittsfield Tonight. I'm here with Yuki Cohen. Uh, for those of you that know Yuki, she is one of our Pittsfield at-large city councilors. Um, and for those of you that don't know Yuki or aren't familiar with her, I'm going to basically uh, let her introduce yourself. So Yuki, if you wanna just introduce yourself to the audience. Yeah, so th th thank you, Mike. And thank you for this invitation. I am, uh, I'm grateful to be here. So yes, Yuki Cohen, uh, everybody probably knows my bar, Methuselah Bar and Lounge. It's been uh, in the news lately, not, for, not always for good things. Um, and I also am, let's see, I mean, I, I, I'm an immigrant. I came, my parents like thought about finding a better life from South Korea to, so we went to Brazil for a little while. So I spent nine years there. And then we went, everybody wants to come to the United States because from our perspective as immigrants, it seems like the land of opportunity and money grows on trees, the roads are paved in gold. So we made the trip here. We made the second immigration from Korea to Brazil, Brazil to here. And um, then I do have, um, and then my parents, I guess being, um, they owned a grocery store and they ran that for like 17 years. They worked like, I don't know, 12, 14 hour days, 365 days a year. And they did that for 17 years. And I think they wanted me to have a more of a corporate life, thinking that it'd be easier. So I, I, I was a dutiful daughter and I followed that path. I went to school, got an accounting degree and I wanted to pursue that further. So I, won, I, I got my MBA. So I do have a degree in finance and management. I spent some time in New York City uh, in managing money for, um, for um, private I did pri private wealth management. So I did that for, for a while. Then I did that here as well. But then I met my now ex-husband and he brought me to the Berkshires, fell in love with the country. After living in extremely large cities most of my life, I discovered the love for the country. How did and, you come uh, right from New York City to, yeah. to here? Yes, so I was living in Manhattan and I feel very, looking back now, I feel very grateful for that experience as well. I grew up really poor. So having, and being in finance during the tech bubble and um, being on the buy side, meaning that um, a lot of the people who sell stocks or, or, or the brokerage firms, they would want us to trade with them because they make a lot of money. So we were wined and dined and um, because they wanted us, they wanted our business. So I, I kind of became I'm very fortunate to have seen a good side of New York. I'm not like the very, um, what do you call, glamorous side of New York City with fancy restaurants. And I felt very grateful to be able to see that coming from where I come from. Um, then I got a little tired and then I, then I met my now ex-husband and then we started coming to the country and I realized that I, I'm more of a country girl. I love the mountains and I love the mountains here. It's just so majestic. And I was kind of feel like uh, protected in a way from, from the mountains. I feel like they're giving me a hug and then there's just some sense of security coming here near the mountains and the lakes are always just beautiful and the cold. I, I agree. Having, I was born and raised here, but having left for a long time, coming yeah. back i have that same feeling uh and, and you were traveling on a even more glamorous field than i was so oh, you saw you saw every veteran stories <laughs> but you, saw, you saw everything to probably like exponentially than what i saw <laughs> on wall street so, so yeah. how long have you been in pittsfield so i moved um so my we I separated from my now ex-husband and in 2011, so I've been living in Pittsfield in, in this current um, condo complex that I love. It's the clock towers. It's so beautiful. Nice. So, so and I, and then leaving a marriage is so hard, especially two kids. But then when I saw this place where it's like my dream apartment in New York that I could never afford and to be able to live in this kind of a resident, uh, in this condo with high ceilings, it's just so beautiful. And um, how long have you uh, been a business owner in Pittsfield? So I opened, um, so let's see. So I opened Most Tavern with my now ex-husband. And, and then that's where I discovered the love of hospitality. I really enjoyed interacting with people. And it was a very personal business that I was in. But then um, I know being in a, behind the bar and talking to people after a drink or two, and their inhibitions get lowered a little bit. It's like some real conversations could be had. And I really fell in love with the real stories that came through um, behind the bar. So I really love, and I, and, and I think coming as a third daughter and in a very patriarchal culture family. So I never had anybody to boss around. I was everybody's servant. So I think serving kind of comes natural. And I, 
it's just something that I've done my whole life. Now, are so you I, the sole owner of the, of yeah, the of Methuselah? Methuselah? Yeah. Yes, I am. Oh, that's awesome. So, yes, yeah, so I was lucky enough to be able to do that after the divorce. And, um, and, and then, and so while the divorce, the divorce took a little while, so it took like three years, I think. And then I was in Pittsfield kind of, you know, healing my broken heart. And then I met some really great people. Uh, I don't know if you, you know, Rachel from Richard Dance and Fitness, Yoga Dance and Fitness. So she was my first friend. Okay. <laughs> and she kind of took me under her wing and weekly sessions, dancing Zumba. I, and, you know, I love to dance. Um, her Zumba class and we went to dinner and mission every Tuesday night, I think we went. And then every week doing that dancing and talking to her, she like healed my heart. And then I kept meeting amazing people like her that are very generous and kind and genuine. And they happen to be Pittsville natives. So, uh, so I, throughout that process, um, I think I just built, I wanted to build a bar because I fell in love with hospitality. I wanted to contribute something to North Street. I know um, Dottie's was there and then Hotel of North was being built. And you are very successful. I mean, Methuselah is yeah, very well I know, known. I know, I know it, looks, it looks that way, but uh, it's really tough to run a business. Um, so I, I think um, you bring yourself everywhere you go. So we all have, I, all, I have my own issues. The business itself, you're right, is very successful. I would say so, yes. Pittsfield's a tough market and to establish yourself and become a known name which you have i mean that's that's a pretty big achievement so yeah and i think the only way to do that is through um and i'm at the bar very often i'm there working shifts and i most people who come through who don't know me they don't realize i am actually the owner because i'm just there serving running around doing everything that needs to get done to serve people and try to serve them well um so i, I think it's part of that um I think what I did realize throughout this whole process is how much people kind of appreciate hard work. So like there's a common ground between all of us that we work really hard because we want to make our lives better, not, not our lives, but we want to do better for our children. Now, then, for, for me, when I came back here, um, the Berkshire Museum was going through some changes where they were selling some art. And yeah. that was like a catalyst for me that started it's Pittsfield tonight and I became this right. voice was there a certain situation or incident that motivated you or made you say that's that's it I've got to run for city council or I want to run for public office um not not in particular I was always it's a it's one of those things and um John Kroll is a good friend of mine my mentor and um he's just been a, a tremendous supporter of myself and the business so he actually approached me and thought, what do you think about running for city council? So I think the first thing I think are, we are, we all, we're all narcissists on some degree, right? Right. So I <laughs> part of me was like, ooh, you know, I'm going to be an important person, a politician that saw myself as that. So there was definitely that element where we feel like we want to feel important. Absolutely. So there was, there was that element, but then at the same time, I never saw myself as a politician. But then the more I talked to John, and then um, and during that time, I happened to be on vacation when I talked to John. There was a woman who was a political, um, I think she's an activist, but she also kind of helps people um, get seats in politics. Um, I forget what her name is. Uh, I forget what her position is. But uh, so I actually was at, on vacation, and then when John called me, and she happened to be sitting across from me, this woman that I just met. And so I was talking to her with, based on her expertise. And she was like, I think we can use more women, especially women that are minorities and you're a single mom and you got your education. I think you can, you can definitely use more people like you with your background in politics. So, and, and so it was, it was, it was, it was that. And, and just thinking that maybe I can make a change or, or contribute to making the city better somehow. Um, I wasn't, I, I didn't really know much about politics. I did watch a lot of, a lot of the city council meetings and I'm familiar looking at budgets. <laughs> so I looked at numbers. Uh, it's we, different we have a history about. here of political cliques. I'm sure if you've ever heard, seen yeah. my shows, I mentioned that yeah. all the time. I, I, yeah. I don't like gangs, <laughs> but uh, it seems to be a long history that goes back decades. That's why you mentioned that going back to the fifties, right? Yes. 60s, yep. do, you, do you feel, uh, you know, I know as your first term, you know, with the pandemic, it's been strange. So, but, but do you feel that you've experienced like as you've 
become a counselor? Do you feel like you've experienced some of that, the pressure from other politicians? So I, I will say that um, in high school, there was a, there was a, I mean, it's very, high school is very clicky um, and we all want to participate in the cool crab. We all want to be part of that tribe, right? So I, I definitely think there's an element to that in, okay. in politics. It, they can, but, I, but it makes sense too, because if you look at any environment that you're in, whether it's work or whether it's anywhere you go, uh, even like if you go to yoga class, there's like a, not, not a click, but the people kind of congregate they tend right. to levitate towards each other. So I think um, it, it makes sense because a lot of them have been politicians. They've been in city council for a very long time. So I could see how they've been through a lot for many years together. So they would be more familiar with each other. And then, and here, here I come, I don't, you know, out of pretty much nowhere <laughs> with no political background and, and just kind of threw my hat into the ring, hoping with, with great intentions always. Um, Intentions are great. Is the impact just as great? I'm not sure, but I, I feel grateful to be where I am. And I think, I feel like I'm more of an outsider than part of the clique at the moment. And it could be because my entire um, tenure so far has been via Zoom. So it's hard to, I mean, I think yeah, that's this has been great. crazy. I mean, this yeah, past right, year so and a half now. The isolation kind of makes it harder to connect because I think, um, it was kind of nice before in January, February, where we would all go out, kind of just kind of get to know each other more after the city council meetings. So that was kind of conducive to more getting to know each other. But there, I mean, there's nothing like that because of COVID. So, so, I, so I don't know if it's part of the isolation, the Zoom. Um, now, as a counselor, then, what would you say, excluding the pandemic, would be the the biggest questions or most common questions that you've fielded as a city councilor? So from the constituents, um, it's interesting that a lot of people, we care about things that are close, that affect us, I think. That's human nature, possibly. Um, so I, we, I get a lot of calls about, you know, traffic. Um, what can we do about the speeding that's going on or the potholes or the, or the, the snow plowing? All that's very important. Um, so those are the questions that I've been getting a lot of. Um, I do get a lot of police officers coming through the bar. Um, so I, I talk to them about what, what do you see the most and where do you find is the one thing that we could improve to make their lives, the police officers' lives a little bit easier. So they bring up the, the opioid um, the issue as the biggest problem that they encounter. Those are the most calls that they get, the most um, things that they have to encounter and the saddest part of their job as well, seeing the level of um, problems that, I mean, problem just seems um, not a strong enough term, but what they see because of the opioid problem that's in Pittsfield. Um, so looking at, looking at other cities and that have gotten, that became gentrified, and I come from Brooklyn, where there was parts of the city that you just didn't go because it was just like full of drugs and, and, and it wasn't safe, a lot of gun violence going on, but now it's become very gentrified. So I'm very always interested in figuring out what leads to that and is that a good thing for everybody? So, so in New York, let's say for example, a lot of the poverty was kind of pushed out. So that's not good for the people that are vulnerable. So I wonder, and I wonder if there's a way to elevate everybody like a rising tide lifts all boats so there's um i mean the our housing left. stock seems to be the biggest issue and affordable rentals and accessible rentals um, right. all the places i've lived and i'm sure you've seen this too it one thing that's strange to me here is there's no apartment complexes per se it's like right. old houses that are converted into apartments and many places that I've moved to, I've been able to just go online, look at a demo, rent an apartment before I get there. That type of rentals doesn't seem to be accessible here. So I think when you talk about gentrification, I think that could be a good thing, but uh, affordable housing and modern apartment living, I think is key to that. Right. Uh, I mean, do you have any views on, on housing and on, on things we can do? 
So we, um, and, and that just came up with the new economic plan, the revitalization and the new zoning that came up uh, in the city council meeting, not this past meeting yesterday, but the one before. And I think Helen Moon makes a really great point in that when we have development, there's a, I think it, there's a requirement that they have to make a percentage um, affordable housing. So she was fighting for not having an exemption to that. So I know, I, I know it's not always black and white, but I think starting with that, when there's a new development going in, making it a portion um, affordable housing, I think that could be a start. Um, and I, I know there's other, um, and I talked to Deanne Rufer or listening to Deanne Rufer, she talks about some of the, the housing developments that, that are on Bradford Street. So they, they, they have things that have gone up, but I think making it part of new development going in, making part of that affordable housing could be a start to a solution. Like for example, where I live, it's, it's gorgeous. So if some of this was accessible, and me coming from a really poor background where we had a one bedroom apartment, we, the five of us in that apartment, I mean, how great would it be if we had access to something as beautiful as my apartment for right. people to, to live in? And I think- yeah, I, I, I do think that that is our biggest obstacle. Um, I've had friends that I've tried to convince to move here. And the first thing they say after a day or two is, where do you live? How do you find right, right right and it's tough when you when you're going you got to go deal with owners individually rather right. than dealing with a company where they say well we have 14 units available and right. we'll show you a demo today and I, and i do think that that's something we're way behind on like we're still in 1970s mode here <laughs> so you think so okay it seems so, that way it's if i think being able to rent is the yeah. main obstacle to getting, you know, we right. talk okay. about all the time, young people coming here, why don't they? Right. That right. is the first step. Right, and there, and that's one of them. There was a research study done by a group um, by Roger Mattis. He ran the, the I think he ran the research he, that definitely housing is one of them for young families. But I think the other big thing was uh, the wife or, or, or no, I shouldn't say the wife, but a second job for the spouse. There was like, let's say you come in with general dynamics and the, the main person moving for general dynamics, for example, but then they didn't necessarily find a second job for, for the spouse. So I guess, cause the industry is very specific here. So there, I mean, there's definitely things that we need to work on. There's definitely, a, uh, Linda always says, there's definitely a lot of work to be done. But what I learned is that things move very fairly slowly because there's a lot of steps that needs to make sure that everything is done safely according to um, code or if you if for, for buildings according to code, according to, to regulations. But I think we can definitely make movements in the right direction. Like there's definitely a lot of property I feel that can be uh, made into affordable housing. I think so, so too. So yeah, and, I was just talking, yeah. I, I mean, for me, the biggest issues that I'm most passionate about would be housing and how that attributes to homelessness and un yes. how that's affected that's, us. Yeah, in, in that what loud, is your biggest yeah. issue? Do you have that one issue that you feel that we need to tackle? Something that really pushes you? Yes. Yeah, so for me, um, and, and for me, and I didn't, I didn't realize as a city council, we don't have as much impact on this, on the school, um, on the school decisions. That's that has a that has a separate school committee. But for me, I, I look at my country. Like when I left South Korea, it was a third world country. But look at where they are today in in my lifetime, and all that, and looking at the studies of how they became the way they are, it was through education. So I would love um, to find ways to be able to educate, like have, uh, to provide great education to every child. I mean, looking at the schools, they are the future of Pittsfield. And right now, if you look at how many kids are not secure in home, as you mentioned, but also food, they're not, I mean, they come to school and they're hungry and you're hungry. I know my 11 year old or my 13 year old even, when they're hungry, there's nothing else that they're thinking about right. except I mean, it's a, it's a basic primal need. So, so that I feel like education is a strong, I feel very strongly about that. And I, but then like, what comes first? Is it the education of the population or do we build a, a better downtown maybe? Do we, 
um, make it beautiful for monies to start flowing in. If you look at like, I, I mean, I walked around Hudson, I walked around Provincetown, I walked around, I walk around Lenox and Great Barrington. It's just kind of figure out where did the, how did the, the puzzle fit to make it so we all benefit. Speaking but, of that, I have yeah. to mention this before I get to the to another topic, but being a business owner on North Street, mm -hmm. one of the big things that's been talked about for months now is the changes we've seen on North Street with the traffic patterns, the bike lanes, the parklets. As a business owner, mm -hmm. uh, do you, how do you feel it's affected you, if at all? Do you feel it's affected you positively or negatively or? So the impact for us has been not an issue. Um, I, for some, somehow, I, I don't know, um, for some reason, I always kind of felt if you build it, if you build the right thing, they will come. And that we've been lucky and fortunate to have people that want to come to Methuselah. So in terms of the traffic, uh, for do you us- the bike traffic as customers? Excuse me, say that again? Do you have customers that, are, uh, that go there on bicycles? No. Because uh, we opened a little bit later, and then um, I think the lane was changed in October, November, so it was a little cold for people to bike. So I, it'll be interesting to see what happens when this summer. Now we have um, a lot of the uh, restrictions being lifted, so I think it'll be interesting to see you know if more people will be biking this summer. But in okay. terms of our traffic flow, uh, our, our business, and then. I think on Monday they talked about the businesses rebounding, and I think it's true that we should. I have I have been seeing a rebound in my business, in terms of the traffic coming in. There's more diners from out of town, so a lot more people are discovering the beauty of Pittsfield for better or for worse. And I love that because I love to show off like the lakes, the mountains, the hiking, the culture. So I love a lot of people from cities coming through to Pittsfield through the bar. Um, and discovering, um, yes, I feel like there's, there's definitely more uptick. Now, speaking of that, I'll have to, I got to bring up the elephant in the room. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah um, like the big thing, as you know, is, is you've, since this pandemic, you've uh, encountered a few violations with the Board of Health and if you've been mentioned, and you've had a very uh, opinion on a couple of those incidents. Right. Um, and then this latest one, which is back in the media again, mm -hmm. and you being a city councilor, that's going to put it more in the media than probably right. somebody who wasn't. Right. Um, I'll leave it up to you. I know a lot of the public has had questions on what happened, what, where we're at. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>